Good, good biofeedback power Monday to you. Hello and welcome. This is Dr. Ariel Policano, and every week I bring to you a class about biofeedback, the genius insight, and we talk about different concepts in energy medicine and natural health. You are welcome to come here as many times as you want. There's never a charge for our weekly class, and you can invite anyone that you would like to to benefit from the information that we are sharing in this class. So it's my great pleasure to be with you today. Welcome and thank you for joining me for the beginning of your week. If you would like to receive a scan today, if you would like to volunteer, send me your full name and date of birth and check your microphone and see if you do have microphone access even though it's not totally necessary, it is a great thing. And if you want to, you can email a picture to me. So if you'd like to just now email me a picture, email me a picture, ariel at awakentotalhealth.com, awakentotalhealth.com, <clears throat> awakentotalhealth.com. So there's the um, email address. So Diana, I want to welcome one of uh, the newest users and um, part of our Genius community, Diana from Florida. Thank you so much for being here. And Sherry from Canada. Actually, we have a couple of Sherrys from Canada who are on. We have the Sherry with a C and Sherry with an S. So welcome to both of you. Um, so Susan says, I love this topic and we're going to be talking about the microtubules today. Tammy is here, and I really want to welcome Tammy. If you'd like a scan today, uh, thank you. I believe a referral from wonderful Colette. So, Tammy, if you'd like a personal scan today, let me know, and we will definitely uh, include you today. So, today we're going to be talking about um, a couple of different things, including the microtubules as a form, a delivery form of consciousness. I want to also welcome Claire from the United Kingdom. She takes care of a lot of genius clients over in the UK, and thank you so much. We're going to have a little time confusion coming up soon. That may have even started today. You must be really on it. Helen is joining us, a wonderful um, woman who's healed herself from Canada. Helen, welcome, and I'm always tickled to see you on the class. TR is here. TR, warm welcome to you, Susan. Sophie from the United Kingdom is here. Welcome, Sophie. Ronnie from South Africa is checking in. And yay, Ronnie, you did it. You got on the webinar today. We're so proud of you. That's awesome. Robin is here. Welcome, Robin. Jessica, our wonderful acupuncturist from the Pacific Northwest, is here. Elizabeth O is here. And hey, Elizabeth, it's great to have you checking in today. Erica from Central California is here. I just want to send you so much love and appreciation. Of course, Karen is joining us from Saskatoon, and that's always just such a wonderful pleasure. I think, um, Karen, you had a client you wanted me to work on, so um, just go ahead and send me their information, and we can talk about the case and so forth. So um, just a couple of quick uh, bookkeeping things or housekeeping things is what I wanted to actually say for everyone who's a uses the genius. So a uh, housekeeping thing here, I want to show you guys if you go to your navigation bar on the genius and you go to your, um, I think it's in accessories. Uh, no, I always mix that up. I don't know why it's just not intuitive. It's in settings. So if we go to settings, there's something called the Genie Cloud Sync Database. Don't know why the developer called it the Genie, but be that as it may, it's really your Genius Cloud Sync Database. <clears throat> and the reason that you would use this would be to be absolutely sure at the end of a session of testing clients or some record that you really, really want to save, that it will be there. When you get the notification at the end of a session, like you'll get this notification right here. You must sync now, navigation, settings, Genie Cloud sync, or you will lose this record. It may be the single most um, confusing prompt in the Genius, but it only applies if you have no Wi-Fi. If you have Wi-Fi, on, you don't need to do this, or not even Wi-Fi, just an internet connection if you have a hotspot connection. 
as long as you can send information from your device to somewhere else, which is it goes to the cloud, you're good to go. The minute that you leave using the Genius with an internet connection, it's off and you're not using the internet in any way, whether it's Wi-Fi or otherwise, and you go off um, to the, you know, the ends of the earth where there's no signal and you do 10 sessions on clients, right? Maybe out on the reservation or wherever it might be. Um, when you are finished at the end of that, if you want to save that particular session, so it's only without Wi-Fi, at the end of each session, you must send this information um, I was going to say at the end of the day, but it's at the end of each session. When you get this warning, that's when it applies. So if you sync it at that time, then it will be saved on your local database. So it'll be saved on your <coughs> it'll be saved on your local iPad. So there are a couple of things that are happening, and it's really confusing. When you don't have an internet connection, it will save it temporarily on your local device as long as you do this. So you don't have any Wi-Fi, as long as you do it after every session, it will then be saved to um, your local device. When you reestablish your connection with Wi-Fi, it will automatically send that information to the cloud. So I, I sort of misspoke. So at the end of each session, only when you don't have an internet connection, you do need to do this at the end of every session, or when you come back, you won't be able to view the past result. So you have to do this only when you don't have an internet connection, you do it, and then you're good to go. Then when you come back, it will transfer the information from your local device to the cloud when you are home again, when you're at your home office or home, wherever it might be. Something then you might want to do at the end of that particular day is you may want to sign completely out of the genius, which is done by going to log out. Now, if you don't know your password, you after you change it this time, go ahead and use this setting to change it to an easy to remember password. So if you need to do a password retrieval to log in and out, after you do that password retrieval, change the password to something that's easy to remember because you don't need to log out of a set of the genius every day. It doesn't save power. It doesn't save memory. You should be leaving the genius active um, all the time. The only time you'd want to sign out and log back in, and I'm, I'm not going to do it now, but you'd want to log out if you want to sync to the cloud. I call it an external sync. And so when you do that, um, it will force everything to be backed up to the cloud. So first you have to internal sync, and then you have to um, external sync. So actually, that's not, it's still not, see how confusing it is? So I'm sorry. This is, I think this is what happens, is at the end of each session when you don't have Wi-Fi, that is correct that you do an internal sync and then it sends the information to the local device. I believe that when you reconnect to Wi-Fi, it automatically sends it to the cloud. So you don't actually need to do this. Let me tell you what this process would be for. Um, so you don't really need to do this process at all because it automatically sends it from your device to the cloud. And that is important. It's important that you reconnect to an internet connection every now and then so that your information will be stored off of your device. You don't want to use the, the Genius for weeks and weeks offline and then have the, the iPad go bad because then none of the information will be downloadable. It won't be backed up to the cloud. So actually that process happens automatically. And in fact, when you do log out and log back in, the information only comes the other way. The information comes from the cloud to your device. So there's three different processes. There's number one is when you're not connected and you want to save a session, you need to save each session with an internal sync. When you return or you're able to reconnect to the internet, it will automatically send all of those records from your local device where they're not now saved 
to the cloud. If you are accidentally logged out or if you need to log out for some reason and you log back in, you will see at the top of your screen um, two refresh signs, like two semicircles with arrows on them. So if you ever think that you've lost your libraries or your clients, look to the upper right and you should see those two semicircles with arrows, also known as a refresh button. You'll hit that button at the top right and then you'll just refresh all the way down. There will be usually three or four sets of things that you need to refresh. So that's a really important concept, you guys. I wanted to spend some time on that because it's really a source of confusion. Obviously, I was even in confused in explaining it. So, <clears throat> so if you have any questions on that, um, or if it was clear as mud, you can let me know. And I can always explain it to you if you need to do a chat with me. Um, you know, just shoot me an email. There's a great chat function now at awakentotalhealth.com. And you can just shoot me a message by clicking on the bottom right little chat circles there. And then we can either chat live or you can just call me and we can actually have a conversation. So those are all good things. Um, so let me just stop the mirroring for a second. So the chat function on my website is actually down here and you can chat at any time. And if you click right here on the question mark, there are actually some um, things that your referrals can read. So they can get a demonstration scan, they can join the class, they can download the trial, they can find out more about what the genius is. Oh, sorry you guys, thanks for letting me know that there's no screen, I appreciate that. Um, Yep, is that what you're saying? Yeah, thanks. Thanks, you guys. So, okay, so yeah, so now you can see that. Awesome. Okay, so <clears throat> yeah, the chat function, just to show you one more time, because it's probably just showing myself, is at the bottom right here. You click on this and you can actually see um, some information about biofeedback. Your referrals can get a demonstration scan. They can join the class. They can do the trial. They can find out more about what the genius is. So that's really cool. Or you can even just chat live here. Um, if you would like to ask any questions or your referral has questions. So <clears throat> then I wanted to also tell you that I'm uploading a lot more articles to my blog, which is really what the newsletter is meant to be, is to bring you um, content articles. And I'm actually activating that, getting that really in place now. So if you read the latest newsletter, if you didn't get it, just send me a message, Ariel at Awaken Total Health, or hit the chat button on the website. And if you go to the latest article, a lot of you got it in the newsletter, um, you can find this article about the brain microtubules. So I just want to talk to you about this. The brain microtubules have been discovered as being a vehicle like how consciousness is introduced into the physical body. So our connection, our delivery of consciousness is now believed to be through these microtubules. So you can read the article and learn more. Basically, the microtubules in the body assist with cell division in the rest of the body, but everywhere in the body, they are a gateway. They are a, um, a means of transporting things in the body. So in the brain, they transport uh, information in a very rapid fire way. Uh, in a massively rapid fire way that we don't necessarily understand how do these thoughts go at the speed of light? How do you send a signal practically instantaneous from your brain to other parts of your body? And it actually is being discovered that we work in a way that's in alignment with quantum mechanics. So, oh my goodness, we're discovering we're quantum beings. So it turns out that the vibration of the energy through the microtubules acts in a very uh, quantum way. And so when you get a, what, what the implication or the upshot of this is, is to understand number one, <clears throat> that the microtubules um, function extremely well with water. So water, helps the facilitation of information through the microtubules. And they did this study. They found that water, when water was evacuated from the central chamber in this experiment they did with the microtubules, the microtubules ceased to exhibit strong correlation across the macromolecular assembly of tubulin subunits. In, in essence, the information was not being transported 
as efficiently as with water. So there's a huge connection between water, consciousness, the microtubules, the DNA, and all of these function much more like a wave form than a static thing. We don't, you know, we see in the world density, but we're only hallucinating that through the functions of our brain, which imagine that space and time exist. But the truth is there's very little here except for empty space. And what this all leads to is an understanding that the human being is a, qu an, a quanta expression and that everything about us is extremely changeable and also programmable. So what you choose to do, the words that you choose to say, the words you choose to speak, the frequencies that you choose to run through the genius can have incredible impact on you. Nothing is set in stone, right? Even stone doesn't exist. It's only 1% matter and 99.99% uh, .99 space. So it's also possible that by working on these brain microtubules through biofeedback that we can harmonize or improve the signaling pathways so that we can improve the signaling through the microtubules or perhaps repair them. Breakdowns in the microtubules have been associated with the development of Alzheimer's. So very, very um, interesting. That's what this um, image here is in the article. It, uh, we covered this in the Alzheimer's class, but basically the accumulation of certain proteins in the microtubule causes damage, and you get this microtubule degradation and these neurofibrillary tangles, and this is what happens in Alzheimer's. So there's a tremendous amount of benefit for consciousness and for the physical body to focus on the microtubules and to send energy to them. The rapid fire communication um, that we're talking about through the microtubules as consciousness can be experienced as a flash of awareness. So if you've ever had just this, you know, you say an intuitive hit or, oh my gosh, I've got this brilliant idea. It's very likely that this vehicle, what is happening is the generation of these quantum vibrations through consciousness. So you're tapping into what Nassim Harriman has called the vacuum. You're tapping into your personal universal connection through the microtubules, which connects to all other consciousness, which connects to the universe. The upshot of this also is that everything can be known through tapping into that consciousness. And so this research is telling us this is why meditation works. When med you're in meditation, you reduce resistant thought and you connect, you physically tap into this microtubule energy. You tap into that consciousness. There are is even evidence that there are there's a gamma wave portion of this that is working through the microtubules. So we talk about um, the gamma frequency that uh, often the Tibetan monks have these surges in gamma from these high, um, these very, very long duration meditations that they do. And so when you really become a great meditator, you sometimes have these flashes of brilliance you have these surges of gamma, and this gamma frequency has now been associated with activity that's happening within the microtubules. So again, you can know many things through your cognitive mind, but you can become a genius, you can become brilliant through tapping in th to meditation. As you become more connected with this consciousness, which has typically been done through meditation or through optimizing this microtubule function, you can connect with this genius frequency. So you can tap into all knowing consciousness. You can, you can even intentionally activate these microtubules right at this moment and say, I'm tapping into the quantum energy of my microtubules and I will allow myself now to receive an instant download of the information about the microtubules. 
you can tap into this infinite consciousness at any time. It's not a co only a cognitive intellect. There's only a very small amount that we can learn about the world through our cognitive intellect. So it's a fascinating article. So definitely go and <clears throat> check it out in on the blog. And you can actually um, get a set of testing panels in the microactivation system which will go through a very detailed microtubule assessment and microtubule solutions. So we'll go through all of the different parts of the microtubule in order to activate and harmonize them, including the different types of tubulin, the alpha tubulin, the gamma tubulin. And so we'll be able to optimize the microtubules and optimize consciousness. So those are all included in the microtubule assessment and microtubule solutions and it comes with a guide as well. So um, we'll, we'll test this panel this morning as we're doing our sessions just for fun. And um, you can definitely check out the article and the activation program when you have a moment. So I oh, just wanted to get these links to you guys. So here's the link to the blog. And then we're gonna um, start doing our cases. So again, you can invite anyone to the cases and uh, to the analysis to the weekly class and we can work on cases together. All right. We're going to be having another Genius Summit come up in a couple of months. So if you're interested in being part of the Genius Summit, if you're a practitioner or someone with an exciting story to share, and we do promote you in the summit. So if you're someone who'd like to gain more access to clients and connect with people who are in a similar uh, state of mind, then you can volunteer to be part of our Genius Summit. So send me a message at awakentotalhealth.com. Okay, let's look at some of your comments and um, talk about, let's get into some of these cases. Uh, my sound was not working until right now. Do we need to get a new voice recording and picture after each session? For example, you run a client this morning, the next day you have a new voice and pick. This remains to be one of the most commonly asked questions, you guys. Do I need a new voice and a new picture? From a strict um, how does the, the genius work perspective, your voice file is not saved. So if we go over here, when you record the voice, let's just go here and let's just record the voice. Okay, so you're recording the person's voice, A-E-I-O-U and so forth. They're going to record their voice. When they're done recording, you can hit upload voice. And this will send their voice recording to your email. It won't have a name connected to it. So you'll need to... Um, make sure that you change that subject line. You need to name that that email. You need to save that file appropriately. The only reason you would want to do that is so that you can replay their voice. And that's perfectly fine, but the voice file is not saved. So if you want to save their voice file because you're going to do a session on them tomorrow <clears throat> and the next day and you won't get their voice, then you can replay this. You also can have them text you a voice print. You can have them send you a voicemail and you play that voicemail on another device and then you just hit the record button again. So those are all perfectly fine. The picture will actually be saved. So you can go in and you can rescan the picture. It should come up here in the picture area and then you can rescan the picture, right? So usually the picture for the client will just come up and you can just hit begin analysis again, okay? So you can, the picture should be there and you can hit begin analysis or you can re-upload it. It should be saved somewhere after the first time that you've uploaded it. So that's the thing. Um, the, the thing to know is that you can also get good results not having the voice or the picture. Because this works in the quantum field, very mysterious things happen. And when you put in that person's name and date of birth, you will still get very, very accurate information about them. With that said, you should have their permission in order to ever do a session on someone. And you should really endeavor to get the most recent voice print and the most recent picture that you can, because that gives you the most, you're tapped into their latest energetic information. 
Nancy K says, is there a replay? Yes, we send the replay out in the newsletter. I think I'm gonna create a page and post that on the website, but we also post it on YouTube. Okay, so, okay. Let's see if I can, all right, so we've got that client there, and then Tammy, did you send me your information? Um, Tammy, did you send me your, make sure you, Tammy, if you want to scan, make sure you put your birth date down into, you emailed a picture, but I need your date of birth. So Tammy, go ahead and send me your birth information in the chat area if you can, and we'll get to Karen's client as well. I'm just going to turn the picture off for a second. So I think what we'll do is we'll bring up the website for a moment and talk a little bit. We also have the endocrine regeneration program going on. So um, it's it's actually already been completed and you can download the endocrine regeneration. The whole purpose is for people to be able to regenerate and balance their hormones with biofeedback. So a lot of exciting things going on. If you guys wanna know why the screen is off, I'm just entering um, Tammy's information, then we're gonna get to Karen's client. And um, let's see, you may have gotten an email about the update. We are gonna have an update. I think it's gonna be in the new year. So, okay, there we go. Actually, we do have Tammy's birth information. Tammy, I got it here. So we have it and I'll get your picture momentarily. And do check your microphone, see if your microphone is active and if we can um, talk to you and find out what's going on. And thanks to Colette for connecting us. Really appreciate that very much. So I've got that information in there and um, maybe tell it, get, think a little bit about what you want to work on. But yeah, people have had um, interesting experiences with the endocrine rejuvenation program in terms of helping their hormones to be more harmonized and balanced and really getting wonderful information. All right, so Tammy, I think that your picture did not come through. So we got your name, your date of birth. I don't, let me see if I see a picture here. Uh, oh, there we go. Okay, got it. Wonderful. Oh, absolutely gorgeous. Okay, so let's take your picture here and we'll get this up on the genius in just a second. Okay. So now we'll go back here. You guys, I'm going to bring the picture back on. There we go. Oh, the picture wasn't on the whole time. Oh, that's so funny. It goes off. I'm so sorry. It goes off when. Uh, you change out of the reflector. By the way, I'm using a, um, a little $15 piece of software called a reflector. And that's what you're seeing when I have the genius on here. You're seeing something that's on my actual iPad that I reflect onto my desktop. And it works great for client sessions too because they can, in, um, in even when they're in person, um, you can see this uh, really, really great in person. So you guys who are joining us past the a little bit past the hour, welcome. We've been talking about the microtubules as a vehicle of consciousness. And we've been talking about some of the aspects of the genius. It's really great to have everybody joining us today. Welcome, Ted. Ted, good to have you here. So Tammy, I'm going to unmute you. I don't know if we do have a microphone connection, but we'll do our best here. Tammy, are you there? Good morning. Oh, yay. Okay, Tammy, welcome. Thank you. So what's going on? So I've done a couple of sessions with Colette, as you said, and thank you for remembering who connected us. Um, but specifically, we are facing um, a decision. We, my husband and I, and I have an adult daughter also. I'm um, in Young Living. And um, my adult daughter is also working full time in Young Living. We work together and we are facing a decision to sell investment property where we live in the state of Oklahoma and purchase a property in Utah and open um, a therapy center and a host facility to bring in members for training right there at corporate and at the farm. So. I'm specifically struggling with the decision if this is the timing to do that or if we need to wait a month, six months. Um, so that's where I am. And I had written an affirmation 
I allow myself to receive an instant download of wisdom to operate my life in harmony with God's plan for me. Oh, wow. That really is aligned with the t the um, the microtubule information that we were talking about today. Yes, I was listening and taking notes when you were speaking. <laughs> that is so cool. I mean, you can just, yeah, activate that infinite knowing through your microtubules and allow that, those gamma waves to come through. Yes. Well, let's record your voice and let's see. So really, there's not a health concern at all. It's really because the genius is really an oracle. It can be used for many different things. It can be used for success and compatibility. So uh, we'll play with this, but that's your focus for today. It is. Okay, so let's record your voice. In your voice, I'm going to have you say your name. If you want to say your first and last name, it's up to you, or you can just say your first name because it's being recorded. And then after you say your name, just keep repeating the vowels A, E, I, O, U. I want to cue you so you know when I'm going to start. I'm going to start in three, two, one. I'm recording. Tammy Boley, A, E, I, O, U. A, E, I, O, U. A E I O 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 U. Perfect. Okay, we got that. And so we've got your voice recording. So that contains a lot of energetic information about you. And now we're assessing your frequency. We're really getting tapped into your frequency, your energy field. And then we do that further by analyzing your picture. So we analyze the picture here and get all that. Your, your picture has a, an amazing amount of energetic information as well. So we're really like gathering all these different pieces of your consciousness, getting that included. And let's go ahead and attach all the libraries. Okay. So tell me again, it's um, an investment property because you're going to be opening. What was the thing you're going to do after if you decide to invest in it? So we just recently hosted um, 12 people in a very large home for a conference that was held in Utah. And we feel pulled that we would like to do this about once a month um, and just bring in, I have about 1,200 team members on my own team, bring in members from my team and members from around the world, really, um, and host them for training so that they can learn holistic um, alternatives. So Ooh, that's really cool. And where not, where is this place located? Um, we're looking in Springville, Utah. Interesting. Wow. Well, that's really exciting. Mm -hmm. And what do you feel about the property? I found a house that I love. <laughs> it's about double the price of our current investment, which we will be selling here. So there's a little bit of trepidation on my part because I'm not big on debt. And um, so just deciding if, uh, if this project is big enough, if it's too big, if it's... <laughs> too small <laughs> and that's okay and what would you say um how would you describe the so property for the purpose of creating a training center yes basically okay what we will have is a home um the home that we have looked at is three levels 5200 square feet so we would have our own living area and then we would have um, two levels that we could do business in. So setting up biofeedback stations, biomat stations, aromatherapy stations, an oxygen bar, um, rice machine, beamer, you know, all of the things that we know about. And basically just work with um, energy medicine and then training um, specifically with Okay, that, that, we total, to, totally got the got the gist of it. Thank you. That's really, really sure. cool. So um, what the genius says is that it's a home run. Oh. And the only place that it that you're not sure and you're not convinced and you're not steady is in your mind because yes. it literally filled in a zero, which I've never seen it completely no fill in at all. So it's really in your mental space that you need to maybe work out the budgets and work out the finances and really see how it does work. But in your body, 
see, we really um, put up in our synergistics Utah property to create the training center. So that's the thing that we're looking for the compatibility with between your energy field and the particular thing. So then we compare it to four different areas, the body compatibility, spiritual compatibility, and your energy field. And we rarely see actually this many fill-ins of the circle. So the body likes it. The spiritual aspect loves it. That's the most complete circle. And your energy field likes it. So you've got the green light as long as you work out the logistics of how your mind can feel comfortable moving forward. Uh, this is absolutely amazing. And direct confirmation, because when I did my scan um, last week with Colette, mm -hmm. when she did my aura, I was split down the middle. I was double-minded. Um, well, no, <laughs> yeah, you're still double-minded. I mean, it's the mind that yeah. has the issue for sure. Yeah, yeah. definitely. <laughs> Amazing. Okay. Well, good. I mean, you know, keep us posted on how this is going. It's very, very exciting. And Absolutely. hopefully you'll have a space to use the genius for biofeedback at the new center. Yes, that's the plan. <laughs> Okay, Tammy, well, be in touch with me for more um, questions, and we can also also do a personal scan together. So just let me know what you need. Keep in contact with me. I sure will. Thank you so much, Ariel. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Oh, that was fun. That mm -hmm. is going to be a really fun project. Um, it's really fun to have um, confirmation from the universe. The universe is absolutely saying yes. It's just the sort of the three-dimensional world um, and some of the worries from her mind, which is very, very normal and natural. Probably one of the best things you can do is just set yourself up as, um, you know, as, go as good as you can um, financially, like do the most conservative financial plan that you can. That's what your, it seems like your energy field is asking for. And it seems like if you do that and the finances flow, um, where you're not like over leveraging yourself, you're going to feel a lot more comfort. And that might be the little trick, the little piece that's missing. And often once we get the piece that's missing, everything just flows because she already knows in her heart that that's what she really wants to do. And one of the best things that I ever really heard was, you know, what it, what is in your heart is the right thing to do. It's always the right thing to do. It's always the thing that's in your heart that is giving you the guidance system um, that this is absolutely the right way to go. Wonderful. I absolutely love it. Well, we're going to turn our attention to Lisa. I believe Lisa is here with Karen, and um, we're going to find out a little bit about what's going on. So maybe we can unmute Karen and talk while we're getting this all set up. So Tammy, thank you again, and we really look forward to hearing the update on how it's going all right so karen how are you oh i'm like nobly excited having so much fun lisa just popped in you know it's going to be you colonics what a day and getting water from the draft though. what can i say how are you <laughs> i'm doing great and so oh you have your colonics set up at your place there uh-huh we're, we're decolonizing <laughs> the masses you know <laughs> You're decolonizing. That's a pretty hilarious play on words. So, um, and Lisa is there, right? Yes. Hello. Hi. So tell us a little bit about what's going on with you today. I have your information from Karen, so I'm going to be plugging that in. But tell me a little bit about what's, uh, tell us a little bit about you and what's going on, what we should work on for you today. Sure. I'm generally a pretty healthy person, but since January, I've been having a lot of lymph pain. I had severe blood loss in March. Why did you uh, lose so much blood in March? I miscarried twins in March and oh, had okay. a hemorrhage. Um, I'm very sorry to hear that. Thank you. And so since then, I've been having just, it just seems like symptoms on top of symptoms, lots of lymph pain, um, fevers, chills. I've had a cough now for going, we're now in the 16th week of a dry, unproductive cough. Um, I've been juicing for like six weeks now, trying to just calm down the whole system, lots of joint pain and fatigue. Um, in terms of hemoglobin levels, everything seems to be back up to normal, but the other symptoms have not cleared. 
in the live blood cell you just in the live i did love live blood cell two weeks ago and they said that i still have a blood infection the infection well that's what they always find on blood and blood, yeah, blood cell that's analysis that's all they said i was like oh that wasn't very helpful <laughs> <laughs> um okay let's record your voice so i'm going to have you, you can say you can <coughs> keep it your first name if you want to um, and then just keep repeating A E I O U. Will you be able to do that? Or can yes, I know you get the call? Okay. All right. So I'll cue you up. So in three, two, one, I'm recording. A E I O U. My name's Lisa Veronica Cush. You want me to keep talking? Yes. I'll keep talking for another seven or eight seconds. I'm happy to be here at Karen's today drinking amazing water and tea and green juice. <laughs> Okay, yeah, we, we didn't cue that up very well for you, but yeah, we just get a 15 second uh, clip of voice. You did fantastic. And we want to record the AEIOU or any aspect of your voice. And there was a question on our Facebook group about um, can the person, does a person need to speak in their own native language or can they speak in their own native language? Uh, you guys, you can say anything. You can speak in any language. You can say anything you want. The suggestion of AEIOU is so that we can um, really get different intonations of the voice. So if there are some int different intonations, but really any voice recording will do. So um, just so you guys know that. Okay, so um, just, I'm gonna mute you guys in a second. I know you got that, the, the cough sounds um, not fun. I know what it's like to have some you know, coughing issues. I think the um, colonics will do wonderfully, really, really well. And you said all the blood work from the regular, your hemoglobin is normal. So there's yes. not an there's not a anemia at this time. None. Okay. All right. Well, I'm gonna get started over here and thank you so much for joining us today. We'll come we'll come back at the end of the session and get your feedback, okay? Okay. All right, so oh, I know it. when you have a chronic cough, it's really hard. Um, what I usually do is, uh, for some reason, I think the mold here in Portland at the beginning of every season, uh, fall, autumn, I'll get the cough. And as long as I both use the genius and I go get acupuncture, that seems to do the trick. Okay, so we've got some good stuff to work with here. So we've got a little bit of almost, think about this as being related to the body. This almost has like a, um, there's definitely like a sort of a pink blockage energy here. There's some clarity here in the crown chakra or um, in the sixth chakra. So there may be like, there's an inner knowing of the way out kind of a thing. And then there's some, um, good stagnation to be moved, good energy to be moved over here and over here. So we got a great starting point. Wonderful. So when I start a case, so th there's a lot of things that you heard from her right away. You can't, you know, not but think that the grief um, part, although she sounds like, you know, that there's been a part of that's been assimilated, like what a strong, resilient person. That's amazing. But still these, you know, physical and emotional pieces sort of intertwining um, that she's working on. So she had so the cough and she really doesn't have the, I think part of that was the blood not having the energy that she once had, right? That's like part of your vital force and the reproductive aspect, the endocrine regeneration piece. I think, um, I think Karen, you just got those panels recently for the endocrine regeneration. Look into some of those could be really helpful for um, using from new moon to full moon and full moon to new moon to just help the whole reproductive cycle could be really, really helpful. So we got the aura. Then I like to go to today's stress. It doesn't really matter if it's green or yellow or any color. I like to just test it. Um, overall, just to get a basic picture, and often I'll do body systems as well. So I just want to get a sense of what's going on. So we've got some degeneration. What that means is that there's a healing process going on. There's a, an active process of healing in effect. And we know that she's working on this issue very much with the cough and the fatigue and so forth. And just probably just not feeling herself, you know, there's a homeopathic, we call them rubrics, which are like symptoms. And we say, ne you know, never better since. So never better, never, never feeling quite like she did, you know, since the particular incident. And that's sort of a homeopathic rubric, something to think about um, 
that that's sort of intertwined into all of this. Okay, I love how people just drop in with Karen. It's so so awesome. So just like sort of the synchronicity of the situation. Okay, we've got some bacteria, which she said possibly an infection. It maybe that's not the biggest thing going on though. Let's um, look a little bit more. There is some stress on the immune system. With 163 being the score here, I'd call this mild heavy metal toxicity, some kidney stuff, and uh, we see mild virus. But we can recheck it. In fact, we could do a quick progressive insights just on these items and say which of these items is actually at the um, highest level of priority. You know, it's interesting that it's the kidneys. So there could be a kidney infection or, you know, the kidney, when you think about your vitality being overworked or being very tired, this can affect the kidney energy. So, and then we do see the, that the bacteria is there. So I do think anti-infectives are gonna be helpful overall. Whatever um, Karen could recommend, there's many different things. There could be cat's claw, it could be echinacea, it could be vitamin C, it could be different essential oils like clove and all of the other good antimicrobial oregano and, and all of those great oils. So, but there probably is something going on with kidneys, something going on with infection. So let's con continue to sort of tease all of this out. Let's look at body systems for a little bit more backup information. Uh, Grace wants to know, you guys, um, Karen and Lisa, if um, you were exposed to the wildfire smoke. So were you exposed to the smoke from the wildfires? And Tammy says, makes sense. The lungs can hold grief. Um, there may be something else going on with the loss of the blood and um, the, in Chinese medicine, the cough. We, de we definitely see the respiratory here. So your low numbers, you guys, are really, really significant and they indicate there's compression, there's profound um, disharmony. And so this can be translated, when we translate the information, we can translate it as there's a respiratory or lung issue. And we can look at some of the respiratory panels as well. Okay, so we looked at that and let's now go into our testing panels and let's look at um, all of the different things that we know we want to look at and include. We want to definitely go back and look at those flower essences. So flower essences are important in any analysis. And she's definitely, if she sounds very res resolved and very like she's really worked through a lot of stuff, but anything that we're picking up, any emotional residue, we can help that um, to be worked out. And we can also determine if it's part of what's going on. So one thing you can actually do in Progressive Insights, um, not Progressive, but Entangled Insights, is actually you could go to the respiratory issue and you can swipe from left to right and go ahead and type in emotional ties to diseases. So you can see if respiratory is related to an emotional issue, as Tammy had said, grief being caught in the lungs, which is something that Chinese medicine tells us that grief can get energetically trapped in the lungs. So that a, was a good um, potential connection. You can actually see it here. And so there is uh, definitely something going on. The grief perhaps is trapped in the lungs. So we see this 87%. So the interpretation is 87% likelihood that these two items are related, that respiratory and emotions are connected. You can also go back and do this again and you can get the prioritization of all the emotions. If you go emotions all, it'll give you the highest resonating emotions. Now take these with a grain of salt. They're not always correct and your emotions are always like they're like dreams, like they're not always clear connections. Not every emotion is gonna be a straight shot to, oh yes, this emotion. So the 100% resonating emotion is guilt. I mean, isn't that incredible? That's amazing. So we absolutely want to include guilt down here. We wanna, whoops, I didn't take that one. I took jealousy, didn't I? So, but it's okay to include the 97s and the 99. Um, 
So we definitely want to take that and let's clear that energy. That's what biofeedback is about. It's about clearing the energy. So we all have jealousy, you know, so that was, I included that down here and happiness. Now you might be like, well, why is happiness there? So happiness is um, that they're trying to resolve a disharmony with the emotion. So disharmony can also happen with a positive emotion. It's like they're trying to access or embrace or connect with the happiness. And then um, regret resonating. So, and, and this isn't like to just navel gaze at all of these. It's like we want to take them and get rid of them. We want to clear them. We want to harmonize them. We want to improve our relationship with them. We want to be able to be free of any limitations that these emotional blocks might be placing on us. I do think it's still valuable to go actually down to the very bottom one here, um, which is about interest. So if there was any apathy, um, this interest might, you know, apply, might reinitiate like a sort of a zest for life and a zest for learning and a zest, but it may not apply either. The low percentages, we've always talked about them being not related, um, but they can also resonate sometimes, so I do include them. Okay, so now let's go, let's also, while we're here, let's do our flower essences. We can also look at some other things that are resonating. We do see chemical sensitivities, that's interesting. And um, because of the lungs, um, she did mention the wildfires, so that is interesting. We have some organophosphates, that's pesticides. Make sure you're eating all organic. I don't know if in your area, if they spray at all. Air pollution is only a 600, but it's still resonating there. This could be past smoke that you were exposed to at some point in your life. Okay, so then to we wanna to go to the mental area here or emotional area, and we want to get our flower essences. Let's go ahead and pop those in. And then we are going to look at respiratory and some hormonal stuff going on. We're going to go a little bit past the hour. So if you need to hop off at the top of the hour, I understand. And I really appreciate you joining us for the class today. So we're going to pop these down in Progressive Insights because we want to do a further analysis. Today, I'm going to include mostly the ones that are just red and blue. And the reason is that we want to correlate our physical issues along with the emotional um, related issues. So we want to correlate the emotional wound um, with the physical wound. And we want to connect those in our harmonizing recipe because we want to clear them together. And as we clear the emotions, we more powerfully clear the physical because they're all, almost always connected, even though we did that test to verify it, but they're almost always connected. So here we're going to go up and we're just going to choose the ones that we want. We want uh, items from the respiratory system. So we're going to look at, let's look at respiratory anatomy, and this is where we'll able, be able to send energy to the lungs. So something about the surfactant and the, bron uh, the bronchi. So the surfactant kind of moistens the areas in the lungs and allows the lungs to expand comfortably. So the bronchi could be infected the cricoid cartilage around the lung area, the larynx, so maybe something about speaking, um, the alveolar ducts, those are so at the very level of oxygen exchange, something going on in the left lung. Okay, let's go to respiratory infection and see if we get any information here. And then we'll go to respiratory solutions and then we'll look at hormones. Interesting strep biofilm. So you may want to look at some of the serapeptase and um, some of the remedies that help with the biofilm. That could be preventing um, you from healing. I like to use the products from Bio Botanicals called Biocidin. I'm pretty sure they'll ship them to Canada. That's out of um, California. It's out of like um, Northern California area. Just look for Google Biocidin or Biobotanicals. And Rachel Fresco is an acupuncturist that owns that company. And she has very good customer um, support. And anybody who wants to do a wholesale account or if you want to order through me or you want more information, we could always do a consultation. But that Biocidin product that she has, she feels is pretty good for removing those biofilms. 
Um, you can also use serapeptase. There's a company called Arthur Andrews Medical that you can order from online. And any type of um, protease that has the um, serapeptase in there will tend to penetrate the biofilm. Let's look at some herbal solutions and get those in the mix as well. And then we'll read and look at the top flower essences that are coming up. So, oh, interesting, phytolacca, we don't see it yet because there's a lag here. But remember, you guys, I talked about that hemp, hydrastis, echinacea, myrrh, and phytolacca. Uh, phytolacca is really, really good for um, like throat infections, respiratory infections. It's one of the toxic herbs, so you have to use it in really low quantities, but um, it's amazing. If you have that, your throat really, really hurts, and it's all scratchy and itchy, Phytolac is amazing, but it also could be really helpful in this chronic cough issue. Another one I absolutely love for the wintertime is the elderberry. We never go out and consume the elderberries raw. They have to be cooked or they can be poisonous, but if you get elderberry syrup or you get elderberry lozenges or you get elderberry in capsules, really excellent for boosting the immune system. We use this in the energetic colds and flu pack that we did, which we can also look, um, we should test those as well. Yerba Santa, um, golden seal, myrrh. Um, this is an older um, scrofularia, a really interesting um, traditional Western herb from the turn of the last century, those nature paths from the 1920s and 30s, right before um, everything changed. Okay, and let's just see if there's any respiratory miasms. And this would be um, like emotional, energetic, and also just um, clearing ancestral grief. So sometimes like that incident happened many, many lifetimes, you know, the same sort of repetition of the incident. And so um, it's interesting clearing ancestral grief, creating lung resilience. So after this is over, um, you doing things to strengthen the lungs, yogic breathing, and you can even get a breathing mask. There are masks online that they are used for athletes, and when you put it on yourself, it looks crazy when you put it on, um, it creates a resistance. So you have to fight harder to get a breath into your lungs, and what it does as a reflexive result is it strengthens the lungs. So look for lung training masks for athletes. They're usually about 20 or $30. And I have one and, you know, when I'm working out, so I don't scare anybody, but, you know, just do it at home. It's wonderful to you. Let's go ahead and look at hormones. And um, let's go ahead and look at let's first hormone seven and see what we behave. Just to start to kick things off. There's a little bit of lag between the two here. And um, then we'll get ready to do a harmonizing. Sherry says the sound is jumpy. That might be me pausing, but I apologize if it is. It may be, I'm not sure what it is. Um, what is the best solution for miasms? The best solution for miasms is homeopathy or just using the genius. It's usually an energetic change that changes the miasm. We use the UNDA numbers, we use homeopaths, homeopathy at a high level, like 1M potencies, or we use the genius. We you know, run that frequency until it's no longer red or blue. Um, okay, let me just go down to the bottom, down to what's in blue. Oh, okay, there we go. So a little bit of estrogen imbalance, you know. Um, okay, so miscarriages. So miscarriages for many different reasons, whatever it might be, but we also want to, it's funny that I don't see progesterone. I didn't see progesterone here, but we always think about progesterone. We usually use higher doses of um, like oral micronized progesterone or I think oral micronized progesterone is much more called for in this case of where we're trying to prevent miscarriages. And I'm sure you've got all of this dialed in. I'm just mentioning them for miscarriage in general. It's almost always a progesterone deficiency, but it could also be that methylation defect. So you should really, really look into that and make sure you're getting the, you may have the MTHFR mutation. Uh, we could do a quick check on the methylation profile, although it's not foolproof. And in this case, you should really look into both methylated folate and methylated Bs. Um, I don't know what the status is. I'm sure you've got a lot of that sort of dialed in, but um, just want to mention it and mention it for our class in general. So getting just the correct form of folate, because women who take folic acid 
are not able to complete the step to convert it to real folate. And so they could be still folic acid deficiency, which could definitely affect, um, it, well, as for certainly for conception and so forth. So let's see, the MTHFR definitely is down here and that's the folate issue, but you could, you would have a different analysis to do that. So um, we could also look at, not really super related, but we could look at fertility assessment. That wasn't really the issue. It was holding the pregnancy. But there are some interesting things that come up, some food intolerances, some adrenal imbalance, heavy metal, blood sugar imbalance, gluten intolerance, a whole bunch of fun stuff, EMFs. Um, an ovulatory cycle. So it, it definitely points us back in the direction of, of hormones and um, the progesterone. So let's see what some fertility solutions would be. Again, this was more about holding the pregnancy. Don Quai is a really unsung hero for hormonal balancing, you guys. Um, it's a really wonderful Chinese medicine um, herb that's really great for any stage of life for balancing hormones. Borage oil. Borage will help with the progesterone. Um, omega-3 fatty acids, some ovarinum for healing the ovaries, tribulus for supporting um, the different hormones, usually testosterone and progesterone. And then let's just see if there's any hormone solutions. Hormone solutions, go here. <clears throat> Okay, so the cough is ancestral clearing. My grandfather had this cough. Um, I am a somatic breath therapist, traditional midwife, and I train doula. So Karen's saying this, so you'll be a great benefit to Lisa. That's really wonderful. Betaine, betaine is a methylation, um, helps with methylation. Uh, my biggest superfood tip of the day, you guys, is eat lots of beets. Beets are good for everybody. They help the regulation of hormones. They help with detoxification. They help the bowels to work better. Um, I was just doing a session. I don't know if Tina is here today. We were doing a session, and I think beets came up high for both of us um, when we were uh, doing that training session together. And also DIM, diendol methane for regulating hormones in the body. We talked a lot, a lot about this in the endocrine regeneration class. Oh, there's that borage at a very high resonance level. Um, let's just see if there's any infection solutions. So we can go to infection, if I could spell it correctly, and we can go to infection solutions, and then we'll get into progressive insights, and um, we'll just, we'll finish up definitely by quarter past the hour. Okay, some ginseng, so movement to remove stagnation in the body. That, that might help with the blood stuff. Uh, let's see what we've got here. Oregon grape root. So I love anything with berberine in it. That can help the liver, and it can help to boost the immune system. So if you don't have Oregon grape root there, you could look for golden seal, oh, which is right here. Interesting, isn't it? And um, again, ginkgo, it's interesting, ginkgo and ginseng, what they both have is to remove stagnation, to help circulation. So maybe that will, maybe there's some blood stagnation of some kind. So it seems like that would be really, really helpful. We did that one. Serapeptase, it's interesting that serapeptase comes up here because serapeptase is what helps to penetrate the biofilms. And it's interesting that it comes in an infection solution because we saw that staph, or was it the Strep, strep biofilm. So, uh, you know, you guys, that's the art of biofeedback is bringing all these pieces together. Hyssop is another anti-infective. I love hyssop for infections. Neem, these are all great. Ganoderma, the medicinal mushrooms, echinacea. A biofilm chelator, it's right at 208. But so, yeah, I think the biofilm is part of the infection issue. So now we've got 90 items for those of you who ask, like, oh, how many items can you put in? So sometimes it's 90 items because in Progressive Insights, we're going to get a wonderful, wonderful ability to see now of 90 items, which is the one that comes up at the very highest level. And that's really fun to look at that. I do apologize, Sherry, if the sound has been in and out. I don't know if anybody else had sound issues. I was pausing a little bit at different times. So, but sometimes it's just the, um, it's your connection. Uh, sometimes it can be my connection as well. So, um, so too funny. I have beets 
to process from the garden. Wonderful. OK, I'm glad the sound cleared up. All right, so um, oak. Oak is the uh, flower essence. So the flower essence is what comes up at the top. And interesting that a homeo homeopathic to balance the ovaries comes up at the top. And also chemical exposure. What do you guys have going on up there? Is there are there any farms nearby that where you could be getting the organophosphate exposure? So oak is the um, sort of the person who is very methodical, who has worked themselves past the point of exhaustion. For those who are struggling and fighting strongly to get well or in connection with the affairs of their daily life, um, they will go on trying one thing after another, though their case may seem hopeless. They fight on. They are discontented with themselves if illness interferes with their duties or with helping others. They're brave people fighting against grave difficulties without loss of hope or effort. So that was one of them. That came up at the very top of 90 items. So as a practitioner or someone you know, practicing biofeedback, you want to say to yourself, why out of 90 items does this come up high? This is a like, it means as we harmonize it for this person, it's like the 80-20 the principle. We do a little bit of a push at the very top and everything else below it will become affected because it's the highest priority according to the energy field, according to your innate consciousness, right? Which is powered by those wonderful microtubules, the emotion guilt. We're, we're not surprised to see this given what she's told us, right? Even though there's no reason um, to feel guilty, of course you still would. It makes cognitive sense. Immune support, the organophosphate, some type of chemical exposure, the need to send energy to the ovaries, the need to send energy to the reproductive system, the need to support the kidneys, um, this is a pituitary hormone that sometimes come up when there is dysregulation of the pituitary. The prolactin is affected. It, it doesn't mean anything um, really more than just a functional concern. There's the respiratory. There's the golden seal. So that golden seal and Oregon grape root has a huge chance of being very beneficial. Adrenal imbalance, regret, and an ovulatory cycle. So um, really all of these are very, very high priority. You could easily just choose select all and be off to the races. But when you think about it, when you choose these ones at the top that are very, very high, and here we have a lot of them that are of a high, uh, you know, really need the priority. So it takes a little bit of time. So let's get to these though, because the hyssop, the testosterone, um, these are all important. Uh, let's see if, how many, let's go ahead and get a few more in here. Let's get the three top flower essences and let's just um, look at those. And then we want to, let's, I think we can harmonize at the same time here. So I can read these and walk and chew gum at the same time. Let's get three minutes in. So we're chicory and white chestnut. So chicory is finding good boundaries, effect, uh, respecting other space. Those who are very mindful of the needs of others and tend to be over, kill, over full of care for children, relatives, and friends, always finding something that they should put right. They're continually collect, correcting what they consider wrong and enjoy doing so. They desire that those for whom they care should for who they, whom they care should be near them. It's very, very common for any type of healer, right? This is like, and these aren't constitutional, you guys. These are just, um, they could be parts of us, but they're just things that we're passing through today. They're energies that can be helpful to us today. They don't have to be exactly us or define us as a person. White chestnut is for unwanted thoughts and mental arguments. Those who cannot prevent the thoughts, ideas, and arguments which they do not desire from entering their mind. Usually at such times when the interest of the moment is not strong enough to keep the mind full, the thoughts um, which worry and still remain, or if for a time thrown out will return. They seem to circle round and round and um, cause themselves to suffer as a result. The presence of such unpleasant thoughts drives out peace and interferes with being able to think only of the work or pleasure of the day. So what we did is we went through the different symptoms that the client reported. We incorporated the emotions. We did some testing with entangled insights to see if we could find out more relationships or connections to emotion. 
and then we went into the progressive insights to find out the highest level of priority. So um, let's go back to, oh, Tammy has some questions. What is the information on chicory, oak, and white chestnut? That is in my mastery guide, and that's from Dr. Edward Bach has contributed. That's his languaging, because he was the original channeler of the Bach flower essences, or some, some people say Dr. Batch. Um, so yes, you can get them when you get my when you get the genius and you get the mastery guide. Those are in there. If Colette has that. She has access to that. So good, good, good. Um, so let's actually talk with um, Lisa and just get her perspective on some of the things that we've been talking about. Uh, Lisa, are you there? Yes, I am. So what was your um, take on the or how does all of this land with you? Um, it's actually landing right where I thought it would. <laughs> so, okay. Um, Good. Most of what I've been feeling came up on the screen. Um, yeah, there is a lot of grief that I know isn't mine sure. that I've been processing. Yeah. Yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. My, and who, yeah like I said, this cough are... that I have it sounds exactly like the cough my grandfather had when I was growing up. And my grandmother, his wife, is dying right now of bone cancer. Oh, oh my goodness. There's so, a lot a lot going on there. Yeah, there's no a lot going grief. on. Yeah. It makes sense why all that grief is sort of circling around. Yes. And the, and the information about the lungs and where things seem to be um, centered, that seems to be what I feel when I'm coughing. Sure. Uh, yeah. Interesting. Well, wonderful. I mean, sometimes just having the it confirmed or seeing it, you know, can be really valuable, can be really helpful. Um, and it, it sounds like, you know, you're in good hands working with Karen and receiving the biofeedback today will also give you a boost and just raise your level of awareness um, about maybe what can come next. <laughs> Great. Okay. Yeah. Well, hopefully next time yeah. we talk to you, the cough will be a little bit better. I was just going to add that, like up here, um, Lisa was very instrumental in training. She was trained as a midwife, but trained all the doulas here. The first class I was, she invited me to, which was great. And then she's also doing like pranayama, but she's a somatic breath work. <laughs> yeah, I'm a, breath, I'm a somatic breath therapist. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I gotcha. Gotcha. Oh, that's so funny. Like that's been in yeah. your, something that you've been thinking about, um, you know, for a while, just how important breath and lungs are. Well, that's hilarious. That's so funny. Thank you for sharing that with us. About the correlation. I was just going to add one more thing, not always necessarily applicable here, but I see a lot of this with um, young girls. If there's been any kind of abuse with the choking and the, and the stuff coming back as they're dealing with um, childhood molestation and stuff too. So there are different things that correlate into that with the emotional stuff too. Good. Thank you. And thanks so much for both of you for being here today. Thank, Thank you. you. And Tawi's here too. <laughs> Hi, Tawi. Hi. Oh, it's so great to have that wonderful um, energy. And we appreciate Lisa as being part of this. So um, I do want to wrap up. But um, when you're doing a short session and you don't see the results that you really want to at the end on the aura, you can add some of the sacred geometry, the solfeggios, the nogiers, and just run those for a, a very short amount of time. Um, because uh, Let's see if we can pop out and pop back. But in the photos, if we look at the um, right here, and we see this, um, this is um, definitely some wonderful movement. We were here, and now we're getting sort of into the body, and we see some of that um, energy is cleared over here, which is really great. We'd like to see this um, clear more. So that's when I would run the solfeggios for a few minutes, just at the end of the session. It was a very short session to see if I could get some change going on there. So today we touched on some basics about the genius. Uh, we talked about the microtubules and um, the connection to consciousness. So if you came in a little bit later, you can read my blog post on the website at awakentotalhealth.com. Let's just go ahead and uh, quickly look at that while we're running for those other few minutes. So we do have the microtubule um, article on the website on the blog. So just go to my website and click on the blog. There are other articles there too. 
if you have, any, I don't know why this is November 4th, that is so weird. Um, it, and then there's a chat function at the bottom right of awakentotalhealth.com. If you or anyone else wants to connect instantaneously, we can do that in the chat or you can send a message to me here. You can even text me and there's a number somewhere in here for um, texting. So and they can also sign up for the trial right here. How do I sign up for the trial? How do I um, get a demonstration scan? How do I join the weekly class? Those are all there on the website. We do have the microtubule activation program available now. And anyone who's interested in additional libraries, you can go here. We also have a new library, which is the human bone anatomy testing set. So if you wanted to use um, the, uh, once again, thanks you guys for telling me this. I'm so sorry. I, I don't know why I can't remember that. So I'm showing the website and I'm not showing the website to most of you. So um, go to the website, go to the blog. You can read, um, activate your microtubules, which is right here and learn about the microtubules for consciousness. We're gonna go back and look at that aura before we end for the day. Then we have the microtubule activation program, which is a new program you can find here on the menu. Genius Libraries, you can find the microtubule activation program and you can read more about the panels and a system that you can use for optimizing the microtubules, which is really, really fun. And some of the fun that we can have with biofeedback. And then we can look at the human bone anatomy. So now you can send energy to all the bones of the body. Um, all the bones are included here in this testing set. And thanks uh, so, so much to um, a tip of the nod to Liza for saying, hey, we really do need the bones. Um, it, it, people do need to have access to the bones. So thank you. Um, so we have that. We have, And if you have, want any other libraries, you can check out Genius Libraries and see we have the microbiome testing, food allergy testing, the mitochondrial rejuvenation program, the vessel harmonizing program, and so forth. So, you know, many thanks to Tammy and many thanks to Lisa for today. Um, we'd love to hear how you're continuing to do. I hope you've downloaded the trial. If you both have downloaded the trial version, please get in touch with me and let me know because I will actually give you some uh, four gifted panels for being for downloading the trial and being a volunteer today. And you can choose the ones that you want for use with your trial. So do contact me um, after the webinar so I can get those special panels to you to use during your trial. One last sort of look at the aura before we go for today. And thanks you guys, those of you who've stayed till the end. Um, thanks for hanging in. Of course, anybody who missed it will be able to catch this on the recording. So this is um, just the, I wanted to do one more final aura check. All right, we're starting, we only did another two minutes, so we're starting to lighten up. Whatever sort of is over here, you know, maybe that's in the sort of the lung heart area. It's sort of the one piece that's sort of sticking around. But other than that, we had a wonderful clearing just in those last two minutes. And you guys, we only really did um, really five minutes of clearing overall. So thank you so much everyone for being a part of our class today. I wanna thank you so, so much. Um, Barbara, if I didn't answer your question, um, then send me a message. And I wanna send everybody much, much love and much abundance for your week. Take care and be well. See you next week, bye-bye for now.